Hey, what's going on? Thanks for stopping by. What we have here is a garage sale find. It is a Pen 650 SS that I picked up for super cheap. Before this video, I'd never cleaned the reel. So what we're gonna do is completely disassemble the reel, clean everything, reassemble the reel. And I broke the bail system the other day. Pretty much the bail stud completely sheared off with a screw and it rendered the bail system useless. So we're gonna fix this reel, clean it, and get it back up to fighting strength. All right, let's just get right into it. We're gonna kick the video off with some awesome B-roll. Boom! 650 looking sexy. All right, Mystic Reel Parts, making the dream work. Uh, ordered the parts to repair the bail system from them. Um, there's my bag of broken 650 SS. Um, so what we're looking at here is the old bail arm. There's the bail stud screw and the uh, roller washer. That roller washer was able to be salvaged, but I just replaced the bail arm and that screw. There's the bail uh, stud screw, lock washer, bail arm, the brand new bail arm that looks good. And then I got a bail wire. There's a setup, fat wrench, uh, paper towels, reel, pliers, and safety glasses. All right, so turn the handle assembly clockwise, remove it. Um, I had to use pliers to remove the bail system because the caveman that owned the reel before me over tightened absolutely everything on this reel and they even stripped a lot of the screws. So uh, I don't know why I protected that plier. Um, I was throwing that bail wire away anyways. Some decent corrosion there on the rotor. All right, uh, looking at the open bearing cover, we just screw that right on off. And then we got a little seal washer there, which is kind of a funny fabric, greasy O-ring thing that's wildly obsolete. Um, and we're gonna back out the housing cover screws. That's gonna eventually free up the housing plate. There's the closed bearing cover, so that just unscrews off on the other side of the housing. And then this bad boy is a standard drive screw, and we just screw that right on out. Now our housing plate should just pop right on off. What's attached to that is a bearing and a main gear, which is roached out with old grease. All right, let's take out the crosswind block. We're gonna back out these crosswind block screws. That's gonna free up the crosswind block plate. What I did here is I just pulled up on the crosswind shaft, called the main shaft on other reels, turned it, and crosswind plate just pops right on out. So we'll set that aside. And then the main shaft or crosswind shaft just pulls right on out of the reel. There's a little notch there on the shaft. That's where that little plate kind of lives in. Cool. All right, what we got here is the bushing cap screw that was wildly over tightened. So I had to use pliers. Uh, normally you'd use a flathead, but uh, because caveman corrosion, um, the flathead was stripped out and it was wildly over tight. So I had to scrape out all that corrosion, grease it up. All right, what we got here is the anti-reverse lever and it's attached to that little bar, which is actually the eccentric. Boom, so the little lever can pop off. Now looking back, you could probably keep that on. Uh, next, we're gonna hold the rotor and we're gonna use a socket to release the rotor nut. Behind it is a rotor washer. That will fall out if you're not paying attention. So the rotor just pops on off. Boom, once you remove that rotor nut. What we're looking at here is the ratchet and anti-reverse system. You got two anti-reverse dogs and a transfer lever, pretty snazzy. Definitely take a mental note of what you're looking at and uh, maybe even take a picture with your phone. That way when you go to reassemble, everything is in the right uh, position. Here's free spool. There's anti-reverse with the silent dog. And then once you manipulate the silent dog lever, the loud dog jumps in and starts clicking. So you have two anti-reverse levers for this reel. And it all seems to be working. Definitely make a note of the functionality, that way when you reassemble the reel, uh, everything will look right. Thumbs up. All right, what am I doing here? All right, so here's the transfer lever. The transfer lever sc screw, the transfer lever screw, I believe is smaller than the dog screw, so it's hard to mix up. But I always like to put the screw and lever together in its own little home on the mat. That way I'm not mixing them up when I go to reassemble the reel. All right, now we're gonna remove the normal dog, the loud dog that barks, i.e. clicks. I'm gonna take a mental note of how the spring is positioned. That way, when I go to reassemble this reel, I'm not scratching my head. And that spring kind of gives the leverage that forces it against the ratchet and makes that clicking noise. So I'm gonna put the dog, the spring, and its own screw together. That way I don't mix it up. And then here we got the silent dog. Now the silent dog, 
uh, I believe it has the same size screw as the normal dog, but it has these little arms that kind of hug the ratchet. So you just kind of have to work that out. Boom, she is free. So definitely corrosion build up on all these levers. So later on, we're gonna go ahead and uh, wire brush those. All right, now we have the bearing cover. I don't know why I didn't take that ratchet off, but um, unscrew the bearing cover. And then your whole pinion gear assembly pops right on out. And then that pinion gear housing is super dirty. So just get a Q-tip in there, clean out all that petrified ancient grease that really isn't doing any good anymore. And now we're looking at the pinion gear assembly. So that ratchet pops off, set that aside. We got the bearing cover, and then we got a pinion spacer, which I don't realize yet. Boom, there's a the pinion spacer, that pops off. We can set that aside. And then what happened here was the bearing was not wanting to jump off the pinion gear. I don't know if there was a burr or some corrosion somewhere that was preventing that bearing from moving off that pinion gear. Uh, regardless, the bearing was in great shape and I didn't want to like destroy the bearing um, by ripping it off the pinion gear. So I just cleaned it while it was on the pinion gear. Um, took a toothbrush, wiped out all that ancient petrified grease out of the pinion gears, gear teeth, and then just overall wiped everything down, uh, Q-tip it there, throw some oil on the bearing. And then we're gonna throw some uh, grease on the pinion gear teeth here shortly after we're done oiling the bearing. Boom. Yeah, throw that grease on that pinion gear teeth and just rub it around. So essentially the heart of the reel and we're just make sure everything's clean and lubed up. Put some uh, grease there on the pinion gear shaft and that'll be behind the bearing. Pinion spacer, I'll just throw a little grease on it. Don't have to get wild with it and we'll throw that on the pinion gear. Shazam, and just pops right on there on top of that bearing. Sweet action. Man, it looks so good now. All right, now we got the bearing cover. It's got some, uh, some junk on it. So we're gonna shine that up, make it look pretty. Boom, throw that on to the pinion gear assembly. Now we got the ratchet. Ratchet had some uh, buildup on it, just petrified grease, maybe a little bit of corrosion. So uh, we'll just wire brush that and slap it on top of the uh, pinion gear. That orientation might not necessarily be correct for the ratchet there, but uh, no matter, we'll make sure it's right once we reassemble the anti-reversing system. All right, there's the pinion gear housing. Uh, I had a bunch of old grease, so I went ahead and fast forward through all the cleaning of that whole area. So really cleaning up the top part of the housing, lubing up everything, make sure those eccentrics and their springs are clean and good to go. Now I'm gonna take that pinion gear uh, assembly and put it in backwards like an idiot there. So we're gonna flip it around. It's kind of hard to mess up when you have two screw holes on top, one on the bottom. So align the screw holes. I don't know why I have that ratchet on there. I just thought it looked cool, but uh, you don't necessarily need the ratchet on now. And then we're gonna take those bearing cover screws uh, and secure that bearing cover plate. Oh, um, the housing plate screws. Um, are too big, are not gonna fit. So if you're an idiot like me and try and screw the housing um, or the bearing cover plate on with those, it's not gonna work. I use a fat wrench. I set the torque to eight inch pounds. That seems to be a good torque that um, tightens everything without stripping your screws. And I haven't had a real fall apart yet, but if anyone out there has a better torque, please let me know. Cool, everything's spinning in good shape. All right, now we're gonna tackle the crosswind block. What I do is I kinda use that small flathead and walk the crosswind gear uh, up and that pushes the crosswind block up. Here I'm just kinda, there we go, popping out the crosswind block. What you have is a channel on the backside and it's super gross and it fits into that little cam at the top of the uh, crosswind block gear. And here I am kinda walking that gear out because once again, that old petrified grease acts like dirt and glue, dirt and glue rather than lubrication. Super nasty inside, all this old petrified grease that's like solidified. So I had to scrape all that out and uh, oil everything up and uh, get it 
uh, looking nice in there. So crosswind gear, cleaning that up. There's that little cam I'm talking about. And that little cam is what resides inside the channel of the crosswind block. So we're gonna grease up that crosswind gear, throw it in there. And then here's the crosswind block itself. There's that little channel. It's filled with like super solid grease. Um, that's crap, so we had to clean that up. Look at that. Ugh. Just total build up, nasty. All right, so we're gonna clean this block up. Now, when we go to put this crosswind block up, maybe I already mentioned it, but we're gonna oil it, grease it, and that angled part will face up towards the rotor. So make sure you have the right orientation. And what I like to do is I like to put, position that cam at 12 o'clock, angle in the crosswind block, and make sure the channel drops right on top of that cam. And then we can rock the uh, crosswind gear down and it kind of walks that crosswind block down to the bottom. Cool. All right, let's take a look at our transfer lever. Um, it had some buildup, so I took a, I believe it's a brass or copper wire brush from my gun cleaning kit, and we're just gonna polish up this transfer lever, make it look nice. There's a transfer lever screw. Cool, cool. All right, there is the normal dog, the loud dog that barks and clicks. Clean that up, and then there's the silent dog. So, um, overall pretty good shape, a little bit of corrosion, um, a little bit of buildup, but those levers were in good shape. So what we're gonna do is, I found that popping this ratchet off first helps put in the normal dog. So we're gonna throw our spring on, make sure we have the prop orientation, the proper orientation that we uh, memorized before we disassemble the reel. And then we're gonna put our dog on. Now notice a little hole on the bottom that kind of faces towards the ratchet and the leg of the spring will kind of sit right behind that little hole. Fast forwarding, fast forwarding all the uh, BS and then we're going to torque it down. Boom. Manipulate it, make sure you have the right orientation, make sure it clicks. Now that little uh, eccentric, the silent dog lever at the top, you might have to position that in order to allow that dog to uh, go back and forth. Now this is the proper orientation of the ratchet. So boom, see how it kind of rocks it up and it snaps back? That seems to be working just fine. Now these screws have a little lip, so you kind of have to, uh, you know, line up the screw just right. That way it, um, that lip will fit into the hole of the dog. Now the silent dog has these two little arms that hug the ratchet. So what I do is I kind of put it on the ratchet and then I'm gonna try and walk it down. Now if you notice on this eccentric on the bottom towards the handle, there's a fat cam and a small cam. Um, later on I'm gonna position that fat cam towards the ratchet, so towards the top and that'll help us put in the transfer lever. All right, so I'm just walking the ratchet down, lining up that silent dog with its respective hole. Use that screwdriver, sort of helps me in vain. <laughs> and we're gonna put the screw in. Put some grease on the lip, that way when the uh, levers are rocking back and forth, they should have plenty of lubrication. So we're just working, tightening, working, tightening, make sure it's all lined up nice. And then I'm gonna test it out here. Perfect. All right, so there that, that bottom eccentric, it has the cam facing the ratchet. Boom, that's the orientation you want. I'm gonna put the grease in there. And same kind of screw and lip system as the dogs. So just kind of work it. It's very intuitive. Boom, torque it down. And now we're gonna test functionality. So pause the video, do what you have to do to look at the orientation and see how all these levers are uh, oriented. So that's free spool. I'm gonna put on my anti-reverse uh, lever. Put the anti-reverse lever screw in. Shazam. 
boom, boom. There, it manipulates that eccentric. Cool, cool. We'll set that aside. Now we're looking at the crosswind shaft. All right, so just cleaning up that uh, crosswind shaft, throwing a little grease on the spool shaft. Spool shaft. Before we put the shaft on, which I messed up several times in the past, we gotta put our rotor back on. So there's that little uh, silver rotor washer. Make sure it's positioned right. We're gonna get our rotor nut and thread it on top of the pinion gear. Boom. Sorry, the camera hunts for focus in uh, automatic mode. I'm still trying to perfect how to work the focus on these repair videos. I have thought of just increasing the depth of field out to max and leaving focus in manual. All right, so we're gonna ratchet down. To be honest, I think that's a 13 millimeter, which it should be a standard ratchet size, so. Um, I just picked something that worked. All right, we'll throw our main shaft in. And there you go, you got that little cutout for the crosswind plate. Okay, the crosswind block snuck out on us. So boom, we're gonna throw that in. I don't know if I necessarily need to do this, but I'm gonna walk it down to the bottom. And boom, we're gonna line up that channel with the main shaft. And now our, um, Cut out for our crosswind plate is aligned. And now we can screw in our crosswind block screws. Oil them up, tighten them down. Torque it out. Looking good. All right, there's our main gear. I don't know if I showed myself cleaning that, but I cleaned it, <laughs> lubed it up. And uh, look at that. You twist the rotor and that crosswind shaft goes up and down exactly what we want to see. All right, we'll put the housing uh, cover screws back in. We'll tighten those down. There's our standard drive screw, so we'll tighten that down. Somewhere in there, I snuck in the bushing cap screw, but I hope you can know how to screw that back in. All right, so with that standard drive screw, and now we can put in the closed bearing cover, so we'll tighten that down. All right, here's our brand new bail arm. So what we're gonna do now is repair the broken bail system. Super exciting. So there's our brand new bail arm. There's our line roller. There's the, um, I think it's the, bail, the roller washer. There's our lock washer. Sweet, ready to rock and roll. So what I have there is the bail stud screw. We're gonna throw it into the hole of the bail arm. Throw the, um, Roller washer on, throw some oil on that bad boy. Looking good. Throw that uh, line roller on. And then there's our bail stud. Goes right in the uh, line roller. Sweet, and we'll tighten this down. Now I was concerned at first if you could over tighten it, but um, I torqued it down eventually and that line roller is still uh, free, free wheeling out there, so you're good to go. All right, so this is kind of tricky. There's a little hole on the back of the bail arm. So the bail arm spring, you got to line it into the bail hole in the bail arm and kind of work the bail arm uh, cam into the channel on the uh, rotor arm. And then you tighten down that uh, bail screw and just torque it down. Next, we're going to flip around the bail system. And uh, we got that roller screw system there, and we're just going to work it in. And it just tightens down, hand tight it. Don't go nuts like a previous owner and use pliers. Um, that way it looks nice and pretty um, and just hand tighten it. And that bill system's working nicely. Next, we're gonna take our spool. We're gonna pop out this retaining spring. And that just pops right on out. Now, what I've seen from old timers is when you're popping out these uh, drag washers, lay them out in a sequential line in the order that they came out. So first spring out is the last spring in and vice versa. There's a bunch of corrosion down in the, uh, the well there. I used a 12 gauge brush to really get in there, clean out all the corrosion and smooth it out. Um, so top to bottom, now bottom to top. Metal, synthetic, metal, synthetic, metal, synthetic, metal, and retaining spring. 
perfect. It just pops on in. You might have to use a flathead to push it in there, but there's little grooves that that retaining spring locks into. All right, we're gonna grease up our, a, uh, we'll call it the spool shaft. Throw the spool on and we're gonna rotate the spool while applying pressure and that's gonna line up all our washers and allow the spool to drop down to uh, its final uh, spot, resting spot there. Cool, we're gonna lube up the uh, drag knob and we're just gonna tighten down. And now we're gonna check our drag system. Tighten it down, should be more resistance on the spool, loosen it up, less resistance on the spool. So that's looking nice. We're gonna throw some oil on our bearing. We're gonna take our seal washer, place it on top of the bearing. Sorry, I had the audio on there. And then we're gonna take our open bearing cover, flip it around and just screw it right on. Cool, cool. Now we take our handle assembly, rotate it counterclockwise. You can hold the uh, rotor and tighten the handle simultaneously to get it nice and tight. Just don't over tighten it. Now we're gonna check all the functionality. We're gonna check our drag, it's working good. I think we just checked the bail system. It appears to be working uh, nicely as well. Um, so tighten drag, more resistance, we'll loosen it up, less resistance. Now I like to store my reels with the drag all the way uh, relaxed, that way we don't like compress the washers. So there's the free spool, manipulated the anti-reverse lever, now we have anti-reverse. Looking good, and I think I'm going to engage here the silent dog lever. Boom, which ironically turns on the loud dog and the clicker. So now it's clicking, and now we have double reversing dogs uh, working for us. Let's click that off, back to normal anti-reverse. Sweet. And then she's uh, spinning, as she should. Woo! Awesome reel. So there you have it, folks. She's ready for war. As always, thanks for stopping by. Um, it's the middle of winter, fishing's probably slow. I'll try and make it out if the sun shines out and uh, try and get on some fish. As always, thanks for stopping by and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.